One of you pointed out during the last test of the remote ID range that I was not separated from the controller. This is something we're gonna to change today. Lock the car. So nobody steals the remote. <laughs> then I would go this way. Let's keep experimenting a little bit with the remote ID to find the limitations of uh, that one. Today we are going to see if uh, I'm separated from the drone uh, with the drone scanner app on uh, this Android phone if I will be able to spot uh, the location of the operator. And then uh, let's just plug in a fresh battery on the drone as I have nobody to assist me on this experiment. So uh, yeah. So let's uh, launch the drone and get that one into position. There's also a few things that we need to f uh, adjust on the app that uh, on the last video that I made on uh, trying to find the maximum range of the remote ID, there was a few of you that uh, threw in some really valuable comments that I could adjust uh, different uh, parameters of uh, the drone scanner app, um, which we would do once we get the drone airborne. Okay. So let's get this one up and flying. Before we take off, as last time, we, uh, I'll just show you where you can check if the drone's, uh, yeah, drone operator ID has been entered into the drone. So that part is uh, sort of working. So you need to scroll down here to the part that says UAS remote identification. And if you go in here, you will be able to, if I'm not pushing all the buttons here, you will be able to see that your drone operator ID is available in here. And it's, my number is uh, finishing off with 5988, just so we can remember that once we're airborne and it starts to show up on the drone scanner app. Okay, so let's get the drone up in the air. We kind of found out that there were no some limitations. Last time we tried this. So we, I think what we will do today is we will put it at 100 meters because it is actually quite windy. Again, it's quite windy. <laughs> and then we will fly it this way. So it seems a, a good uh, fair uh, sort of distance for detecting the drone is 150 meters. We can switch around the camera here. So maybe we should just go a little bit further back here. So we over this forest here. So 120 meters like this. And uh, you can see I'm located down here with the edge. And if I stop the video here, I can zoom in like a factor three. Yeah, we would need that a little bit later uh, <laughs> when we are doing this experiment because I will basically let the drone sit hovering and then I will go outside the car with the drone scanner app, leave the remote in here and then we'll see if uh, we can detect the drone using the drone scanner app. So one of the questions that I actually got was uh, from you, which drone scanner app is he actually using? And uh, it's a, <laughs> I'm not kidding, it's actually called Drone Scanner and you can look it up on the Play Store. If you just uh, type in Drone Scanner, you will uh, get sort of a link so you can download this app. But right now it's only working on uh, Android. So let's, draw, let's launch the Drone Scanner app and see if we can uh, detect whatever is going on here. <laughs> I just hooked it up um, on uh, Wi-Fi so I can basically take it here so you can see that I'm located on this little road here. So you can see me by the blue dot here. And uh, at some point, hopefully, we will be able to see the... Yeah, there it was. It was showing up right now and we can identify that it's my drone because the drone operator idea ends with 5988. So you see that one is up there. So if I select it down here, I would get two pins that's being thrown on the map. One that is uh, the operator location. And that makes perfectly sense because I have a uh, sort of the remote here. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, the other one is the drone that is hanging out there somewhere in the air hovering in uh, something that is uh, 100 meters in the height and in a distance of uh, 120 meters away. One of you brought up uh, during um, the last video, let me just see here, that's actually quite uh, relevant because we had a little bit of a problem getting this updated uh, fast enough. 
So you uh, are using the app with the default setting uh, expiration of 60 seconds. In the settings, you can be set in steps of five seconds between 10 and 600 seconds. So if we go in and uh, we change that part, we would get, I guess, a much ra more rapid uh, update of the app. So I'm going under the preferences here and then I'm scrolling down. Yes, you see expiration time in seconds. So let's just put that one. Yeah. How far can I get it down? Five seconds, 10 seconds? I don't know, five? Let's try that. No, 10. 10 seconds is the lowest one and prevent the screen from sleeping. I think that's a good idea as well. So if we go back here, I think, unless the drone has disappeared, I would go outside now because the car can basically probably give some problems uh, with the signal interference here. So let me just go outside and bring the camera with me. Ooh. See, right now it's not detecting anything. Why is it not detecting anything? The drone is still up there doing a nice job. Maybe I should save a little bit of SD card here. Let me just bring it a little bit closer then. So 100 meters and maybe pull it down to 80. So, see for some reason it's not really working very well right now. So let me just try and launch the app again. See if we can make it work just put this one up here so yeah there's no nothing that uh, should interfere between uh, me and the drone as it is right now should be so this video is um, very easy to make because you will not be able to spot the operator position at all it's showing up anything here on the app Okay, so I'm back inside the car here, so let's see if I can make this work. We learned on the other test that mm, putting it high sometimes helps. So let's just put it in the maximum altitude. So, we're up there now. And then... Let's just fly it over here. Somewhere. We had no problems picking it up at around less than 150 meters uh, on the last test. So I have a really hard time figuring out why this is not working. I'll try to restart the phone and see if that helps. So now we rebooted the phone. Let's see if we can make it work. Yes, it showed up now. Good. So now we can do the test. Now we can do the test. Hardy, 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 hardy. So, so you can see that it shows the drone. So let's uh, just see if we can test this out in a good way. So I put this for recording, and then I will put the remote inside the car. I can see the drone out there. Yes. So that shouldn't be a problem. Lock the car. So nobody steals the remote. <laughs> then I would go this way. See? Right now I can't spot anything. Just jump in here. So I'm going to run down by the other cars. I'm not going that far away because I need to go back to the See, it's not seeing anything. Yeah, it's still seeing something. So see, now I'm located here. You can see that uh, I'm the blue dot. So basically I can spot. So now we lost it again. No, it's back again. <laughs> so 
I will not go that far away, but basically it's just showing you the principle here. So now I'm standing in some location somewhere. I can see the drone out there. Right now I'm maybe 100 meters away from uh, the takeoff point, yeah. So I can basically go in here on the map. I have the drone operator location. Uh, remember that the, the remote is uh, lying inside my car. Let's just go back. I'm not feeling really... <laughs> I should find somebody that could help me do this test. But as you showed just before that uh, if I'm 100% separated away from uh, the remote, you can see that the operator location will show up on the map. It's not super consistent, I agree, but this is basically what, uh, what is going on. So now you can see that I'm back. I'm reunited with the controller as well as uh, the phone that has the drone scanner app and you can see now there's like a correlation between uh, the operator and uh, the drone scanner uh, app which is uh, sort of indicated by uh, the blue dot that you see on the screen. So let's get the drone back. It updates a lot faster if we do this uh, change in the, the preferences, but if the idea is that you're going to spot the drone operator, you might want to <laughs> extend the holding time a bit. So now it's coming down here. And the roof. So. <laughs> Back safe again. So it's fair to say it's not super consistent in picking up uh, information about both uh, the operator location as well as uh, the drone pilot. But it is in most cases enough to pinpoint in what area that you should search for the guy that's flying the drone. That's of course uh, super scary, but what uh, doesn't it doesn't worry me that the government is putting up some equipment uh, trying to sort of monitor what it is that I'm doing and making sure that I'm not violating any uh, of uh, the rules and will be able to locate me if they need to do that. What worries me is that this app is uh, yeah widely available in the app store and anyone with an Android phone will be able to sort of, uh, yeah, yeah launch it and then uh, be able to detect your position and if this is somebody that doesn't agree with your rights to flying drones this this could lead to a lot of confrontations so that's of course a concern of mine this was just a super short test to show you that it's possible to find the drone operator's location only by the use of a standard android cell phone all right, if you missed the first video that I made where I tried to find the limitations on how far away uh, sort of the ro remote ID range that is possible here in Europe with the CE broadcasting power that's in our av availability, then I'll make sure to link it through this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.